my fellow YouTubers. Hello, this is Roy back again. Let's go from that over to this. This is... I was cutting some wood blocks up, and what I was working on is I am messing with my little Tesla coil on the side of my Edley Scallon wheel on the side of my little capacitors. And I was cutting these blocks. And I stumbled on something. I put these rings together. And when I was thinking about sticking the shaft in there, it kind of reminded me of the center here and I said okay so we have a crankshaft and then we have a coil and the coil is putting out rings of magnetic field and I said okay so here we are rings of magnetic field come out they are hitting the neutrals here of these magnets and so that means these magnets will go get stronger and also, it dawned on me. I've been doing some somewhat research, a little bit, but somewhat, on the Tesla um, uh, coils, the ones that are wound outward. And these are made out of like ribbon copper. And it just dawned on me. I said, okay. Well, maybe I got it wrong here with the copper on the in between this ring and this ring. We know there's insulation that goes under the ring to separate the magnetic field from the body itself. But what I realized was looking down at Ed's wheel in one of those pictures, I said that inside here there was a key that comes out that obviously is a spark gap and then there's like a sphere sitting over here not directly cross but a little bit on an angle and then on the back side there's that handle that comes up and then on the back side there's another sphere sitting over here i seen four of these guys so there was basically four of these spheres but only one had the key sticking out <clears throat> so that to me always said to myself that, ah, spark gap spark gap okay so here I'm looking down at the clover and this has kind of been the thing that I've been thinking about forever the clover about the clover guess what guys what about the clover well if you think about the clover what you're really thinking about is what happens when you take from a spark coming out and going underneath this bottom ring which really represents out here where I had my copper. Take the copper out. This is what I'm thinking. I'm going to take this ring off, put this ring off, flatten out this copper so it's like a ribbon. <clears throat> and it's going directly underneath this steel. Okay, bar. And that goes completely around. It's connected 100% around. That, I believe is just like Edlia Scallon's perpetual motion holder. It actually sit on top of a conductor sitting directly on top of these V-shaped magnets, positive, negative. So sitting back here, you're not at the neutral, you're hitting both bars pretty good back here, right where it gets ready to turn around and come back. So... At this point, you're capturing in the conductor the copper ribbon underneath this ring, both of these fields. 
that these fields are going to bring it up. Of course, they want to run to the iron, right? So they'll bring it to this iron here. When they get to that iron, they're going to run around this iron ring in motion all the time, like the perpetual motion holder, with no disconnect. So basically, these guys in this ring here are going to be turning, 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 never stopping. Now, that brings me back to the top guy. The question of all questions, the clover ring. What about the clover ring? Look at it, guys. It actually gives this ring a chance to have a break. It gets one break, two breaks, three breaks, four breaks. So basically, your charges that are running in here will come up here and be able to separate themselves. And that's what they want to do. They don't really want to be together. They want to separate. So they're able to separate here. And this, what this is creating, I believe, is like four circuits. So we got four individual circuits. And that's where the clover half comes in, where like Ed Leo Scout has his crescent moon. I think, I think there's, I'm working and I can't say a lot, but I do have like, a lot of like Edley of Scallon Coral Castle knowledge <clears throat> and if you look down at Edley of Scallon's property to me the barrier wall along with a couple other things really look to me like a circuit board putting it out there that's all I'm saying I'm not putting it out there but I'm putting it out there. You guys get the fucking hint, right? I'm putting it out there. Looks like a circuit board. Like he built that to show us something. So guys, I um, wanted to show you my little capacitor. This is my alkaline water in a aluminum bud can. I got me a nice slew of them here. And guys, the question is, did I drink them all? Not tonight, obviously. But it took a while. So got all my aluminum cans. This is with my alkaline water, which has a negative ion charge. I'm going to come over here to the voltmeter. I'm going to grab the negative. The positive is in the center. And what I realized, what I liked about these aluminum cans, bottles, whatever, that the outside is colored. In order to put a paint or any kind of anything on the aluminum there, you have to pretty much put an opposite charge of what the aluminum is in order for it to stick. So that means it makes a great dielectric. Okay, so here we are. Aluminum base. Positive of the voltmeter sitting in there. And I'm going to go ahead and we're going to touch the bottom, okay? Just touch the bottom like that. I'm going to go over to the voltmeter. Look, it's one. I'm going to let it go. There we go. Let it, let it. I want you to notice something. You see the numbers going down? Here we go again. I'm going to touch the bottom. The bottom now has no of this color on it, so it's clear just like the top. So what's happening in this beautiful little capacitor I built is that the top side has a charge, the bottom side has a charge. So the, the charges are sh switching from top to bottom, not from so much inside out. Now it is filled with my alkaline water, which makes a big difference. Here we are. We're not even touching anything. Here we go, touch, and it's blown. This is millivolts, which is no big deal, but it's. I'm just showing you the fact that what I got here. And then all of a sudden, this is the key fact. You guys just started building capacitors. I guess I've been dying to do a couple of capacitor videos, and we're going to put some out. I'm going to let go. Okay, I'm going to let this guy go. Where you at? Bam, I'm going to let it go. And then watch the voltmeter drop down. Okay. What I want to talk about with that is is... Pretty much, the charge has been being built up in this capacitor because it's sitting on a positive and negative charge from these V-shaped magnets. So basically, what I am doing is taking a, two charges out of a magnet, put it into a bottle capacitor, and make it into electric. All right? So... Great thing? I don't know. Big deal? I don't know. 
But I'll tell you what I do know is that I learned that and that's pretty fucking cool to be able to do that. So that on the small scale, I'm into Wilhelm Reich. And I'm going to bring Wilhelm Reich into a lot of my studies now beside Elias Gallen because Wilhelm Reich is pretty much my mm, Angus Wangus. He's my goalie. Yes, he is. Not Angus Wangus, but I'm referring to Angus Wangus. He has a video there. He's taking his favorite guys and he's making them like hockey players because he's from Canada. I'm from USA, baby. Woo! Let's take take them out. But anyway, hockey, hockey, hockey. Love hockey. So my goalie is Wilhelm Reich. Wilhelm Reich built something called the Organ Accumulator. Bam. And pretty much it consists of organic, bam, inorganic. Now this is a welding rod. It's a conductor. Pretty much it's not, it doesn't, Pull it out, it doesn't stick. Okay. And as far as sticking, I just stuck that back at the center. As far as sticking, take this guy here. This is the part that goes to the perpetual motion holder. And if you want to stick that to the V-shaped magnets, you can see they're not that strong, but they are strong enough to hold that puppy up there. Okay, guys? So back down to my Wilhelm Reich study here. So pretty much, look at the voltmeter, and I am going to touch the top. And you can see the voltmeter. Touch the wood. Look at the voltmeter. Take a negative charge. Why is it a negative charge? Come on, guys. It's being pulled down to the ground all the time. Look at that, jump up a little bit from that. Now what I did was, I got these rods through this piece of wood to another piece of wood. The back side of that is all connected, okay? See it all connected? I'm gonna touch that, look, look at that, look at that. Now what I did here on this connection, these are making all the rods connected. Now. On this study here, you can see that I'm touching the negative. I'm going with the capacitor. Don't, don't forget, I'm hooked up to that sucker too. So I'm charging the capacitor this way through by using wood and some conduit. Capacitor's going up. What I'm trying to show you guys is pretty much that two major components, two, that make up everything is organic and inorganic.